Satan is not interested in whatever that you have acquired in this world. Hmm. The major responsibility of any man of God, for that matter, is to align the lost soul back to God and gain them for the kingdom of God. So what God is now doing is to look for people like you. That is what you are doing. You might not know. You are a troop building up the body of Christ. Letting people know the truth from the falsehood. But today what is happening? Look at the music, in the music industry. Entertainment world generally. People are mortgaging their soul just because of mundane things. Vain glory. Things that ordinarily you will die one day and leave all these things. As a pastor, as a general overseer, the major problem we have in the church is greed. He said in 1979, God sent a white prophet to go around the whole world and tell the church that the devil was preparing millions of pastors. Can you imagine? Millions of his own pastors to take over the church. To infiltrate the church. To, be, to infiltrate the church and take over the church. There is a system. Either you believe it or you don't believe it. There is a system. And that is why you men of God watching this program. Things might be very difficult for you, but please hold on. So for you that think your anointing is not enough and you want to go for those big men seminar to lay hand upon you, you are, your calling is totally different from the calling of so many of these people. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing. Any country where the gospel or the church fails, the government will fail. Hmm. The industry will fail. Every aspect of that country will certainly fail. Because the Bible says it is God that orders the steps of the righteous. And when the righteous is in power, the people will rejoice. Mm. I am not going to castigate anybody, but the fact remains that the politics of Nigeria has gotten to a level that the church has now thrown themselves into the ring. They've thrown their heart into the ring. Mm. They want to be part of it. This is the parameter to judge who is a successful minister. Mm. But today in Nigeria, if you don't have a jeep, not just a donor, a big jeep, if you don't have a mega auditorium, if your members are not up to 500,000 to 1 million, you are not a major man of God. The God that I serve, the God of Israel, is not interested in the number of branches you have. Mm. What is the joy of heaven if you have 10 million members and only 10 of them are going to heaven? Jesus. And somebody somewhere has just 20 members and is able to channel 15 of them to go to the kingdom of God. God does not have grandchildren. Do you know that? God does not have grandchildren. No Everybody grandchildren. is a child of God. So if your pastor says you must, he must pray for you before you get results, he is deceiving you. You are not a grandchild of God. You are not a great grandchild of God. You are a child of God. Direct relationship. Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. If any man of God tells you the ministry that God has given me is to give children to people, he's a, he's a liar. If any man of God tells you that the ministry God has committed to my hands is to make people prosper, he's a liar. It's another very wonderful day, a lovely day. We thank God Almighty for His mercy upon our life, for the kind of thing He has done for us on another very wonderful day. This is the eighth day of the second month of year 2022. That is eighth Tuesday, 8th of February, year 2022. And uh, by the grace of God, we have a very different guest today on Asabi Africa TV. Uh, the good thing is that a movie has been released in the last six to seven months now uh, entitled Beyond the Deadline and the movie is about what is happening in the Christian circle, in the Christian dome, especially in Nigeria and in Africa where a lot of God generals have been sacked by God himself due to their, uh, their obnoxious idiosyncrasies and their uh, their, their, their appetite for wealth. 
instead of salvation you know uh, the movie is presently on the YouTube and we thank God one of the producers and the director and particularly an actor in that movie who is famously known in the movie as Bishop Mike is sitting with us today and uh, we are going to be asking him questions especially about the Christian community and why do we think we have a lot of challenges a lot of problems a lot of hula values in that in that sector uh, we are not antichrist but it is very evident that we need to speak about reforms especially attitudinally that can help majority of christians to find where to worship and where to relate with their god instead for them to be following the sacked or the disgruntled or the omitted generals today we have mr Dami no, I will say, maybe I'll call him an evangelist, but let's call him, <laughs> for the sake of this interview, an evangelist, Dami Lola Akimbagbo, one of the producers and actors of Beyond the Deadlines. So God, God, God bless you, I really appreciate you. God bless and, you, uh, God bless you yeah, So much has been said about Asabi Africa. Thank and uh, as, as an introduction, I would like to say, the whole world appreciates you. Oh, thank you so much. I was God discussing with someone and I said, Asabe on Asabe Africa TV is a prophet of prophets. Oh, God bless you sir. might not know it that way, but this is a big ministry. God bless you, because this is an end time where God is raising up new people, troops, just like that film talks about. Mm. The fall of the generals and the rise of the troop. Mm. You are a troop. One of the people that God is using in this end time to sanitize the church. Mm. Because a whole lot of things are gone awry in the church. Mm. And we can't all keep quiet and allow things to go the way it has been going. Mm. So we need people like you to voice out, to bring people that believe in genuine sanitization of the church to yeah. come on. And one great thing that you have done, which I've had revelation about um, a lot of commendation from other people, is the fact that you are doing this thing for next to nothing. You are not taking money from men of God you bring on your channel. Thank you so much. You sir. Interview them for nothing, all the Tibetans of this world, God the pastor, the buyers, and they all appreciate you. And we thank God for what God is using them to do. God bless uh, you. Because we are in a perilous time, hmm. and people have to come out to voice out against what is happening in the church of God. Mm. And this is the reason why God instructed me to produce this film titled Beyond the Deadline, The Fall of the Generals and the Rise of the Troop. So I really appreciate you for the human job Thanks that so you much. are doing uh, all over the world. Sir. God bless you so much, sir. Uh, it's just, we, have, we, are, we are appreciative of the fact that we have to give every genuine voice the platform to raise their voice so that a lot of people can learn. But let's go into that movie. Mm. I mean, the movie is talking about the fall of the general mm -hmm. and the appointment of the troops. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the general fall in the world battle, mm -hmm. you can imagine World War One, World War Two, and you say the generals are falling and the troops are now doing the human job. And mm -hmm. uh, you in look terms at of a military. Uh, Strategy. uh, strategies. Yeah. The generals are always in charge of war. Mm. They plan the strategies, they plan the movement, they plan the attack, they plan the withdrawal, the retrieve, and all, so many other things. Mm. But in a case where you find out that the generals who ought to be in front of the war is falling, the war has to go on. Mm. And that is why the troop has to take over. But I'll give this as uh, an introduction to myself. You know, I've always been in the yes, in media. Mm. And the church and children has always been my major calling. I remember that you used to have one of the most famous... Yes, program, yes, church yes. Diary. Church diary. Yes. Almost, almost every on, ministry. On, on Sky Fair. Yes. And at the time, it was almost... We were involved in the the Millennium Crusade of uh, Evangelist Ram Bonke. When we did all Nigeria, the... Uh, when he came to Nigeria. 21 years, years ago. 21 years ago. 2021 years ago, 20, years ago. Like and uh, we also consulted for so many major ministries winners chapel the lost chosen deeper life four square gospel church name it, hundreds of them even when Benny Hinn came to Nigeria for that great crusade yes sir. we were in charge of so many things that has to do with uh, mm. the publicity and so many other stuff like that so as a background I never knew that God was giving me an experience that we later need in life mm. now after some time God called me and he specifically spoke to me that he wanted to use me to sanitize the church. 
when I woke up from that revelation, I, I was almost laughing at myself. God using me, a man without a voice, to mm. sanitize the church. Where you have people of big status, people of big names and all that all over the world. Just like Why I was me? telling Moses. Yes, just like I was desert. telling Moses, who am I? I said, good, even myself, I really need the mercy of God. My faith is not even as big as that of mustard seed. Mm. But God uses the, 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 the foolish thing to confound the wise. Mm. That is what God does. But it has come to a, gen a, a stage in life that God is no longer reliant on people with big names, people with big uh, denominations, people with very big ministries. But he said it has come to a level where he has retired. So majority of the big names that you are hearing in the churches today, they might have the name, they might have the money, they might have all the status, but then so many of them, God said he has rejected and retired them mm. because they are no longer fighting for his kingdom. Rather that they are building up their own empires in this world. Empire. A lot of general versus will rise up to them and tell you, I have one million members. Funnily enough, one big man of God came out some couple of months back to say he spent well over 10 billion era on the roofing of his ministry. A big man of God said they want to build a big mansion, a big auditorium by mm. three kilometers by three kilometers and all that. Mm. What does all this, what do they portend to heaven? Mm. Heaven is not interested in whatever that you have acquired in this world. Mm. The major responsibility of any man of God, for that matter, is to align the lost soul back to God and gain them for the kingdom of God. But the, 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 the complaint of God today is that they are building empires. Mm. That they are no God. longer interested in the kingdom of God. So but the kingdom must survive. The kingdom must exist. The kingdom must go on. So what God is now doing is to look for people like you. That is what you are doing. You might not know. You are a troop building up the body of Christ. Letting people know the truth from the falsehood. Hmm. I've watched this channel over and over again and I've heard what a, big, a lot of men of God have said on this program. Hmm. If we all keep quiet, a lot of things will go wrong because we have left our pot on wash and now our cooking is burning. Hmm. About uh, some couple of years ago on Church Diary, a big man of God came on the program. A very old man for that matter. And I asked him a question. I said, sir, is Jesus Christ still coming back? Hmm. He looked at me and said, ah, you're a popular evangelist. Even I said, yes, I'm an evangelist. But it's solely a question. Because how many churches preach about the second coming of Jesus Christ? Hmm. Nobody seems to remember that he's coming back. And the man said one thing. And it has been ringing in my ear even up till now. He said, in 1979, God sent a white prophet to go around the whole world and tell the church, that the devil was preparing millions of pastors. Can you imagine? Millions of his own pastor to take over the church. To infiltrate the church. To, be, to infiltrate the church and take over the church. Hmm. And he said, my son, do you know what is happening now? Those people have taken over the church. Jesus Christ. Today we hear about private jail, we hear about universities, we hear about big names and That's all that now. And you begin to ask yourself, where is that voice? Does says the Lord. In the history of Israel, every time when there was a prophet, there was always a every time when there was a problem, there was always a prophet that would come and say, "Thus says the Lord," mm. and there will be signs and wonders, and sanity, and sanity. Today, Boko Haram can go inside the church and bomb everybody, kill everybody, and nothing will happen. Boko Haram can go there and slaughter people right inside the church, and yet nobody can speak for God. Has the God that we are serving has it become that weak? God cannot change, but the church has betrayed God. And that is why God said he's no longer interested in big names because they are not doing his bidding anymore. Mm -hmm. You watching me, God is interested in you. You might be a drunkard, you might be an arm robber, you might be a prostitute. If you watch that film, the lady that eventually become the, the, the that, main evangelist, Sister, Sister Jane, she starts off as a prostitute. The white big men of God busy holding meeting, how to build the biggest auditorium, how to build the biggest airport, to be the biggest uh, uh, hospital, biggest university, just like we are seeing all over the, the whole world today. The devil on his own to sit down and is planning with his own left hand and stool. Just allow them to continue. Give me them false philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. say, look, what do, does the church need? They need money. Give them money. Let them buy private jets. Give them money. Let them build hospitals. Let them build all the universities. Even private ship. Private ship. Bring them anything they want as long as they do not talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm. We are okay. Mm. Because the biggest problem that the devil has today 
is that he knows that his, his time is very short. His time is so short and he wants people to be caught unaware. And that is why today there is so much of, 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 of side talk everywhere, distractions, things that will not even allow people to remember that Jesus Christ is coming back. Mm. And that was why God said, rise up my son, go and produce that film. And he gave me the title. Say so beyond the deadline, the fall of the generals and the rise of the truth. And that was why, but the very day God gave me that revelation, the problem of my life started. Before we even go to the problem of your life, sir, mm. I watched the film and I saw where Bishop Mike, Bishop Dollar, and Bishop, Bishop, Bart, Bartolo, Bart, Bishop Bart, Bartolomeo, Bart, yeah, Bartolomeo mm. and some other bishop, the female bishop among them were talking about how they are going to make some money from crusade, they made millions of naira, mm. mm. how they are going to raise pillars, build structures in terms of domes, expensive eye-catching domes mm. and they're going to make you know uh, you know uh, meditorium uh, meditorium or whatever auditorium that will mm. capture more than five million people yeah you know and it was something they were discussing about how they're going to raise in not just in nigeria all over the, all over the world you know and at the end of the day uh, you saw how bishop bat eventually died and end up in a in in hell, hellfire, in hellfire mm. when he was not going to listen and you saw how the other sister that was coming to christ mm. how even bishop bat told him they, they frustrated her they tried to they, frustrate they her that he, he said she joined the system mm. that if she joined the system they are going to put her among the system of the bishops she will be He's, well, mentioning that word system yes sir it's a reflection of what is happening in the body of christ today there is a system either you believe it or you don't believe there is a system and that is why you men of God watching this program, things might be very difficult for you, but please hold on. You might be facing one challenge or the other, please hold on. Are it might be men of God or the There are genuine men of God. There are still lots of them. There are a lot of great, wonderful, genuine men of God worldwide today. But the fact remains that the kingdom of darkness has infiltrated into the church. There is a, a big siege. The church is under a big siege today. And that is why God needs you and me to rise up to speak for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Because one, if we allow this to continue, now there are three categories of people that actually need this now. You are a general overseer. You know you have gone astray from where God has sent you. A lot of them are out there. You might be the biggest auditorium. You have the best private jet. You have the best uh, houses and all that. The best cars. The best fleet of cars. But let me tell you one thing. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man mm. if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Lose his soul. Just one soul. Just one soul. Mm. If you watch a film, they call that film Swing, Swing God. There is a reflection of what is happening in the world today now. In Swing God, there is a particular lawyer that the devil actually, you know, uh, got her service to fight for him in that film. And the woman said, the, the devil told the woman, say, can you give me your soul and I will give you a hundred million dollars. Mm. And the woman looked at my hundred million dollars, said to hell with my soul. Mm. To her, she does not know the value of the soul of a man. Mm. But the devil knows the value of the soul of a man. And that was why he was able to offer a hundred million dollars for one soul. Mm. But today what is happening? Look at the music in the music industry. Entertainment world generally. People are mortgaging their soul just because of mundane things. Vain glory. Things that ordinarily you will die one day and leave all these things. As a pastor, as a general overseer, the major problem we have in the church is greed majority of them they started very well but because they want to join they want to belong mm. just last week i was talking to a man of god very close to my area there he said he left lagos to go for a seminar in abuja mm. what was happening in that seminar one big man of god let me use his name as a don't let me reveal his identity he said they paid big money to attend that seminar and at the end of that seminar the man of god needed to impact anointing upon them and they all nailed down that it was in, after collecting their money, impacted anointing, they paid big money. But by the time he returned, the first night when he slept, he knew that he had made a mistake. Jesus. After the hand that man, after spending his money and taking the layment of a hand of man on his head. That is why the kingdom of darkness is expanding every day because those that, that's, Jesus Christ said something. He said, the children of darkness are wiser Damn. in their kingdom than the children of light. Mm. Today, a lot of them, they are genuinely called. But because they want to say, ah, one bishop in Abuja, one bishop in uh, uh, Ota wants to lay hand upon them, they have to go and they will be infected with negative uh, anointing. Mm. The whole lot of them that started genuinely, before you know it, they begin to backslide. Mm. 
and they begin to pursue things that are not necessary. So God is saying and telling the whole world that the end time is very near. So that man slept and discovered himself in another place. He discovered himself in another place. He found that the hand that was laid upon him by this very popular man of God in Abuja, very popular man of God in Abuja that laid down on him, he began to see negative manifestations. My Lord Jesus. Negative manifestation. So for you that think your anointing is not enough, and you want to go for those big men seminar to lay hand upon you, you are, your calling is totally different from the calling of so many of these people. The church is under a heavy siege, yeah. and it's only be careful those ones that God has actually stood by that will survive this thing. I want to ask you that, is it good for the church to be very political? Because we are talking about the message of salvation, winning of soul. Mm. In a particular part of beyond the deadline, you saw how the bishop came out to a popular politician in town mm. who was coming to seek their votes mm. for his governorship ambition. And all the bishop was say, oh, we we'll command our church to give you their vote. Mm. Then Bishop Mike was talking, Bishop Adlonu was talking, uh, Bishop Dollar was talking, and all the bishops were telling him that, don't worry, sir, that if you, you, have, this, a, you have a mandate. <laughs> yeah, we, you have a mandate. If you do this, just do this, just do this for us. And man will say, thank you. Just like the time we did it last time. If you collect it with what happened during the 2019 election, yes. when the popular Bishop Binota was telling his church member that, please vote candidate A, don't vote candidate B. And the same Bishop even was in a meeting with uh, one Elijah Atiku Abubakar, with General Robert Sanjo, mm. inside his house in order, trying mm. to beg General Robert Sanjo to endorse the Atiku man. Mm. The Atiku just uh, if you well remember man. that scenario very well, as it was happening in Camp A, it was also happening in Camp B. There was another big man of God that was supporting the other one and asked his own member to, yes. to vote for the other man That's as well. For, uh, for the six. Yes, now because what, what the, you are seeing, what you are seeing in the world today, mm. the church has gone into the world. Hmm. And the world has come into the church. Against James 4 4. Yes. And what we are seeing today is a total reflection of the situation in the spirit realm, where there is a big tussle between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness for the soul of men, for the soul of countries. Hmm. Let me tell you one thing any country where the gospel or the church fails, the government will fail, hmm. the industry will fail every aspect of that country will certainly fail because the bible say it is god that orders the steps of the righteous and when the righteous is in power the people will rejoice mm. i am not going to castigate anybody but the fact remains that the politics of nigeria has got into a level that the church has now thrown themselves into the ring they've thrown their heart into the ring mm. they want to be part of it but now is it the same church that we we are seeing a lot of atrocities going on if they get to the position of power as the president of the country what will happen but today everybody i'm not condemning politics is for everybody if you know you can survive it as a christian well go ahead go and do it but if you know that it's a system that will corrupt you and rob you of your ultimate goal of making heaven there is nothing in this world that is as important as your soul so in politics we take you away from God. It is best not to go into it. But today, the men of God are there. There was a time I happened to be a consultant to PFA, Pensacola Fellowship of Nigeria, Lagos State Zone. And uh, there was a, a governorship election going on. And one of the candidates actually came to the meeting and said he wants all the people to vote for him, all the churches and all that. But do you know that the pastors collected money from this candidate and because the money did not get to the church members, the church member refused to vote for that man Jesus. and he lost the election. Hi. So it's a give and take thing. That mm. is what is happening to them. Everybody wants to belong. Rob my back and rob your rob own. Rob my back and rob your own. If I support your government with the, the, the vote of my of my of my members, make sure you don't you don't disturb my ministry. Allow our people to be in your cabinet. Even the and man so is many, a if, no matter what he is, everybody wants to be involved. You see, this issue of national cake has become a problem. Because the church is part now going towards that direction. Everybody wants to eat their bit out of the national cake. And that is what you will reflect in that scene that I just talked about now. But if you remember very well watching that film, as they are having their own meeting, the devil is equally having his own in meeting. His own kingdom. In his own kingdom. Even turning out uh, philosophy. What to do? They allow them to forms. continue. Is it money? Now, the, the, the demon that is reigning in the church today is the demon of mammon. That's the spirit of. Wealth, money, mama has taken over the church. <coughs> Today now, people will base their respect of a man of God 
on the achievement, on the physical achievement of that man of God. He has a private jet, he has a big university, he has 10 million members. That makes him a big man of God. Oh, that may give me divine... They, they, exactly. There is a man, I don't want to mention his name too. He started a group, they call it Association of Successful Ministers. Association of Successful Ministers. What is the parameter to judge who is a successful minister? But today in Nigeria, if you don't have a jeep, not just a donor a big jeep, if you don't have a mega auditorium, if your members are not up to 500,000 to 1 million, you are not a major man of God. Mm -hmm. But God is not interested in the number of people that you have in your ministry. Mm -hmm. The God that I serve, the God of Israel, is not interested in the number of branches you have. Mm. What is the joy of heaven if you have 10 million members and only 10 of them are going to heaven? Jesus. And somebody somewhere has just 20 members and is able to channel 15 of them to go to the kingdom of God. I think that other lower church is better. It's better. But today because people have been brainwashed totally. I want to belong. This is the church that is raining now. But do you know the foundation of this church? My, 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 my father in the Lord, witness Ken Paul Obeke, he said Jesus Christ appeared to him. And right there under his nose, he divided himself to two identical halves. Hmm. And that he could not even recognize which one is a genuine, which one is a fake. And Jesus Christ told him that this is the way the church is today. Hmm. So that is why you hear some ministry praying in the name of their geo, God of so, 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 and so. God of so, so, so. It is very dangerous. God of my father, the Lord. God of this so, ministry. So say God of choosing or something like that. Whatsoever God they call, and it might not be the original the God that we are, are watching. You see all choosing people rolling inside water, gutter water, and say they are praising God. Okada is passing, splatting water on them. I mean, I've never seen, and they say they are watching God of the choosing. It's, it's just unfortunate that most Christians have become so gullible. It's quite they have become so gullible that whatsoever they hear their pastors say, even against whatever direction God is giving them, this, the, 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 the statement or the stand of the apostles supersede whatsoever that God has said. Mm. You hardly hear Christians now quoting the Bible. It is Papa said, Mama said, Papa said. Who is your Papa? Who is your Mama? How many of Papas and Mamas did you hear Jesus Christ mention in the Bible? Or those that came before, those that accepted the faithful. How many times did you hear somebody say, He's my father in the Lord, he's my mother in the Lord? And this is where the pollution comes in. Idolatry comes into the church mm. because we are not worshiping God anymore. We are worshiping our general overseers. Mm. I was discussing with a young lady and I mentioned the name of, his, of her pastor. And she said, Ah, sir, you can't just call my pastor like that. You need to put doctor, so, 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 and so. I said, Jesus ah. Christ. But when. Well, when you call Jesus Christ, insult, no, that is what is going on. So they've perm permitted ahead. My brother, let me tell God. you, if you have not seen it, if you have not heard it, that you have to put doctor before her daddy can be mentioned. It, it, that Maybe tells you the level of honor they now have for their pastors. Maybe she has mental problems. Sir. No, whatsoever they can call it. Mm. But that same person, if you abuse Jesus Christ beside her, she will go her own way. Mm. That is the level to which the church has come. Mm. So we must rise up and we thank God for people like you. We need more. All the money by the just of this world. We need more of them to speak out. So that because one, we are not we are not criticizing anybody. I am not criticizing anybody. I am not a critic. Whatsoever I am doing as a person, I am doing it because of the love of God. I am correcting and trying to make a change and showing love. This is correction in love. We are not against any ministry. God has called you. There are a lot of big men of God that every day I pray for them. I pray for them because I know a single mistake on their part can bring down millions of people. Have you thought of this possibility? Let somebody of the status of Abadi Adiboye stand up today and say, Ah, eh, praise, eh, somebody praise the Lord. Oh. Hallelujah. Eh, the last night I had the revelation. And God said, adultery and fornication are no longer sin. What do the people will do? They will move into everybody will hotel. go on the street. One no. bossy no. borough no. everywhere. No. Tell Samson, what that, tell? No. that tells you how people yeah, hold they whatever they say. Mm. So when you know that your faith can affect the faith of millions of people, you have to be extremely careful. Mm. Because what does it profit a man if you gain this whole world and lose your soul? Mm. The most anybody can spend in this world now, a hundred years, one twenty years. Can you ever compare that to eternity? No. What will God say about you? Now let's look at the area of evangelism. A man of God was saying, some churches, they will go out, ah, we are going and uh, uh, fishing, they want to go and fish, and in the process, they will catch a lot of fishes, 
and they will put those fishes under the care of a crocodile. Jesus. What do you think will happen? The fishes are going to be consumed. The kind of people that they ordain as pastors are people that ordinarily you will not even expect to see near the church. But some pastors even look like thug. But look even after face. going uh, going uh, fishing, they will go, they will catch all the fishes. And put, and put the fishes under the care of a, of a crocodile. Jesus. And the crocodile will end up eating all the fishes. Mm. So what is the profit? The, well, there's a church in London now that they've closed 14 branches. They fall and die anointing. Most of the pastors, they say they are almost like rogue, like tout. The M2 Loma is better than some of them because they sleep with people's wife. They use juju on people. I mean, a woman that spoke to me from London the other day said they even programmed cancer into her life. Mm. This is a woman that spent 14 years in the choir, in mm. church, in London there. Mm. They want to make her to run mad. Mm. A woman, a Cameroonian that spoke yesterday on Morning by the Just program, was telling us how one apostle John Sleeman slept with her in France, raped her, or even slept with her since 2015 around december and since then he has programmed madness into the life of this woman they rejected everything to her life she was rushed from france to cameroon back she talked if about she says she's going to divide the message she died now so that's why you're talking about fishes and crocodiles the fishes and crocodiles because normally when you when crocodile you now wants to feed you feed on the fishes you have labored you have done so much to bring all the fishes together now why put the fishes under the guide of a crocodile or a snake Knowing fully well that the snake or crocodile will feed on those fishes. Mm. That is exactly. Most men of God today have become spiritual terrorists. Spiritual terrorists because their activities uh, is making people, I mean, heaven to cry. Mm. Heaven is shedding tears because of what is going on in the church today. There are a lot of people outside there. Do you know today, if you need to do a business with a man of God, or you need to do a business with somebody, and the person introduces himself as a pastor, you'll be more cautious. Dealing with that person that you will have done with an ordinary area boy. Because you will be ready for that work. But you cannot trust anybody. You cannot trust your pastor. Gone are the days when we were growing up. If you are sick and your church members are coming to visit you. The very moment you see them, that love will come upon you. Can even, you know, directly kill you. Kill you. Mm. But today you go to the house of a church member to even eat or even drink has become a problem. You cannot trust anybody. That is the level to which the church has come. And I begin to ask myself sometimes, how did we get to this level? Why? Greed. Those that God genuinely called, they don't want to stand where God actually placed them. We did not read it in the Bible that Jesus Christ rode on the prayer of the best private jet. Why must it not become a condition that before you are, you are, you are seen as a big man of God, you must have a, a successful man of God, you must have a private jet. How can somebody come and say, I spent over 10 billion naira in the roofing of my church? And people were clapping. I saw men of God that were celebrating him. Yes, I mean, yes. In a country in where people cannot afford to eat two square meals in a day. Now, let me ask you. If a church as big as Redeemed Church, Four Square Church, Winners Chapel, if they decide to collaborate and build a, a, a mega city, where people can rent a small apartment and pay monthly. Can they not afford to do it? They can. If they want to I mean, look, have the biggest farm where all the produce will come to the, the normal people, their members and all that, at an affordable rate, can they don't do it? They can't. They can't do that. They but can. then there is so much corruption in the church now that everybody is fighting for himself. Mm. Everybody is building an empire. And the interest of God is no longer in the heart of so many pastors. It's just increase the revenue. It's just a craze for revenue, craze for wealth, craze for membership, craze for expansion. What is the essence of bringing more people to the body of Christ when those that are inside are not even doing well? The, pre the vice president of this country is a pastor for crying out loud. Mm. Is there any reflection in what is happening in the country? Nothing like that. Even though the other general pastors should come together because we have left our pot unwashed. Mm. When we ought to have evangelized, we did not evangelize. Those people that we failed to evangelize are the ones now coming back to hunt us now. Mm. Because we didn't do those things that ordinary we should have given priority to. And that is why the church is failing. So people are now celebrating financial mundane thing, vain glorious. What the Bible called vain glories are now what people are celebrating. And heaven is weeping. If you if you watch that film in the prologue, he said, My generals have disappointed me. That's God speaking there. Mm. Say, My generals have disappointed me. They no longer fight for my kingdom, but rather they build their own empires. Empires are what so many pastors. There are genuine men of God. Mm. Beware of that. There are genuine men of God, sincere men of God. But so many of these ones, the devil will continue to attack them and torment them and ensure that they don't make a headway in order to frustrate them. 
So those that can stand, they will stand to the end. Let's even go to the issue of expansionism and, uh, and, and financial, whatever. In that film, you can see where Bishop Bart in his church was calling the finance director and were asking her that, can you give me the accounts? Okay, all the files came and said, let me look at tithes. The tithes? And offering? when she brought the file for offering of tithes, mm. he got mad. He said, how can 11 million enter? Mm. Upper we will have 15 million. This is an embarrassment. Mm. And he threatened her that he's going to sack her if she cannot talk to the old member to cajole the members. To cajole them to pay to, more. To pay, to more, pay more. Let them pay and more. At the meeting of the bishop, they even said they are not even taking 10%, they are taking 30. 30%. For them yes. to be able to maintain their status. They say they call it kingdom investment. Yes. But in the long run, it's like expansionism. In, and in a, in a church whereby the, the, the man of God say. After the whole church, I would say, it will me. Mm. So how do you reconcile that with I, I was just coming to that. I used to attend a church. When after the service, the man of God would ask us, it will me. Can you imagine? Now, the priority now is monetary consideration. Monetary consideration? Material wealth. That is now the priority, not the number of souls that are won in that church, in that particular service. And you see some service, they will tell you, yes, we have won 20,000 souls within the last three days. Now, those souls they, call, they, 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 they claim to have won are members of another denomination. Mm. They went and go out there to bring people from one ministry to another ministry. And they call that expansion of the work of God. Now, let me give you this analogy. For about two years, there is a particular place at uh, very close to Songo. For two years, we went there evangelizing every Saturday. Mm. If you get to this particular location, you will wait for the soul of people. People will gather in fives, in tens, in twenties. What do they do? Drinking, smoking in their hand, and all the atrocities in this world. And for two good years, myself and some of my friends, we were going there evangelizing, preaching. But could you believe that for the two years, we only won one soul? One only one soul in the whole two years that we went there. One and what was the reason? The reason is that even if you evangelize to these people and they accept Jesus Christ, but because of the environment where they dwell, where they live, is so polluted, as long as you still continue to dwell inside of that environment, you cannot change. Jesus. What did we actually need then? What we needed was just funds. Mm. Funds to get accommodation outside that domain. Mm. Take them away from that particular location. As long as they are not seeing those atrocities every day, their hearts can change and turn to God. But we didn't have the money. And there are churches today that are building hundreds of thousands of churches. Mm. Meanwhile, the real sinners are there suffering. And we let the real sinners and we capture the members of other ministries to bring to our ministry and we call that evangelism. It's called poaching, sir. It's poaching. It's poaching, not evangelism. A young lady was preaching to me. Gave me she gave me a flyer. I said, ah, if you can come to our ministry, all your problems are all over. I said, you are stupid. That's what I told her. Mm. I said, you are stupid. You are not inviting me to Jesus. You are inviting me to your ministry. Mm. And that is what is happening. When they go out, they invite. It's just to fill up the church. What features are you catching? It's just to fill up the church. So that they can cut, get more offerings, get more tithes, get more this and all that. Mm. So it, it's, a, it's such a very sorry situation that we have found ourselves. Mm. And heaven is daily weeping. The blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary. For what purpose is it for now? What is the benefit of that for those people that understand why Christ died on the cross of Calvary? And here we are now mortgaging that blood. Some people are selling the blood of Jesus. Yeah, they sell it for fun uh, inside the people. Blood sell the blood of Jesus. They sell man too. They sell this. They sell that. They take the faith of people away from God to material things. In fact, uh, it was a uh, pastor. Is it bishop or reverend? I already said Jaffa. Is it a bishop or a pastor? A bishop. Mm, uh, yes. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a, a bishop. I already said Jaffa. That went to America and he was crying. Practically crying to the people of America in that crusade. He was not just even crying, he was shouting. He has mantles and catch him like this 90. And he said he should come out and pick one each for five thousand dollars. That he knows that they've been buying other things for the church. But if it is God that called him, these people should come out now, come out now, come out now. They should not sit down, they should stand and come out now, 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 now. Now, I have 90 of these, and I want to do something really crazy. 
See, we Africans, we're crazy bunch of people. Yeah, we're crazy. And I'm number one. Yeah, we're crazy. We do some things you just don't understand what kind of people are these. But that is why, that is why Dr. Sorolo said, you're going to see the first Christian country. First Christian nation is going to come out of Africa. 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 Now, this is what I want to, I want to do. I want 90 persons. 90 persons who will give $5,000. Now, I know you've been given. I want 90 persons. 90 percent who will give five thousand dollars now i know you've been given i know you, you you've been given every day you're gonna give tomorrow come here 90 persons i'm gonna give you one of these mantles i'm telling you if you believe i'm a man of god god sent me and i'm not doing this on my own wheel Get out of your seat! Get out of your seat now! Get out of your seat quickly! Come on! Come on! Get out of your one more number, and you need to be standing here. You need to get out of your seat. Don't be amongst those that miss God. Don't miss God now! Not now! Not now! Not now! Don't miss God! I've watched People several, come out, sir. several similar contents. Yes, sir. I watched one of one, uh, what was lady, this lady now? Okay, Adejimo, from Adejimo. From Adejimo. Yes, I watched that one of Ashimolowo. And after watching those programs, I shed tears. Why did you how, did, tears? how did we get to this level? Mm. When Ashimolo was asking people that for the number of years that they have spent on art, they should come and pay 1,000 naira. So that means if you are 50 years, you pay 50,000 naira. If you are 100 years, you pay 100,000. Fine, that was okay. After that, he now made another call. For the number of years you still want to spend on this art, come and pay $1,000. And I was looking. How did we get to this level? A lot for some people, but I want them to stand to the left. The second seat is a seed of a glorious expectation for every year you have lived on earth i want you to give a hundred naira no no a thousand naira sorry for every year you've lived on earth i want you to give a thousand naira so if you've lived on earth 35 years 35 000. If you've lived on earth 60 years 60 000. those people will stand on the right those who are giving a thousand dollars to the left thousand naira for every year you've lived on earth to the right those who are doing both in the middle thousand dollars to the left thousand naira for every year you've lived on earth to the right those who are doing both in the middle get out of your seat how do they get back to their bed and lay their head on their pillow and they sleep and they have peace in their mind doing all that. Do you know what the Bible called the reprobate mind? When the heart of a man gets to a level where you no longer consider the feeling of God and the feeling of other people, that is a, a reprobate mind. It is no longer a normal thing. If you have got it to a level where after reading the Bible and your activities is 100% against whatever tenet you have in the Bible, then this is a reprobate mind. But some people still fall for it. But the problem is not even just these so-called generals or people that will call spiritual terrorists. The problem sometimes is even the members. When we learn how to voice out, these people will not continue to do some of these atrocities. But this is not the member under Juju. That, that, yes, that, yes, I agree with you. There are a lot of members that have been hypnotized. I was in a, I was in a church for about two years. Mm. It's a, it was a CSD church. I saw hell. In this same church, if they want to conduct deliverance, they will tie you, chain, they will chain you to a wall. Jesus Christ. And in this church, they pray, they do VG every day of the year. You don't want them to die, no rest. They will tell you if they lose you, you will go and eat. So for you not to go and eat, they have to chain you to a wall. Jesus. But eventually, when God now showed me the reality of that church, I ran away. The you devil ran. does not live inside hell or on the street anymore. Hmm. The devil is now on the altar. Living inside the altar. Right on the altar. Maybe that's why the Bible says judgment will start from the altar. When we were growing up, that scripture was one of the scriptures that I was always asking my pastor. 
of all the things going on in the world, why must judgment start on the altar inside the house of God with all the good things? But we never knew that it would come to this level. Hmm. You see, with God, there is no tomorrow. There is no future. He sees ahead. Every day is present with God. Hmm. What is happening today, February? God has seen it 2,000 years ago. Hmm. So today you see men of God hear a lot of things that will make your head to go gaga. Hmm. Men of God sleeping with women right on the altar. Somebody using human body to do the foundation of a whole church. People it, it, making it, love yeah. to mommy water in order to get more power, money from money world. People doing all sort of atrocity because they want to belong. And yet people still go to this church. A lot of them, that is why if you are watching me, we have a skit that is going on now. And that skit is, is called Stop Attending Church. The church is under siege. Stop attending the church. The, the, the church is, is under siege. siege. It's symbolic. It's not that you should not go to church, but it's a symbolic gesture. And the fact remains that the church is no longer just the avenue to get to God. Everybody needs a personal relationship with God. One on one. One on one. God does not have grandchildren. Do you know that? God does not have grandchildren. No Everybody grandchildren. is a child of God. So if your pastor says you must, he must pray for you before you get results, he's deceiving you. You are not a grandchild of God. You are not a great grandchild of God. You are a child of God. Direct relationship. Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Not withstanding whatsoever pastor, your pastor is saying. If the word of God is against what your pastor is saying, align with the word of God. Hmm. Align with the word of God, not the word of your pastor. So the expansion madness that is going on, everybody wants to build a, a church in every street. What does it, what good does it protect to heaven? What purpose does it serve to heaven? If you have branches in every house, and yet those are inside the church, they are walking towards hell fire. Or they are crocodiles or snakes. They are, they, are, they, are, they are crocodiles and snakes feeding on the fish that has already been prepared for the kingdom. Ask yourself, is my pastor the right person to pastor me? Let me tell you one thing. There is no excuse when you get to heaven. Those ones that are being deceived and those ones that are deceiving people, they will get the same judgment. Mm. If you find yourself in a church, a woman told me that she was attending T.B. Joshua's church just because she wants to get healing. That she knew it was a wrong place. Mm. But yet because she needed that healing, she was attending that church. Mm. As it was so that happened. God will not forgive you. Because there is, there is no excuse when you get to heaven. You are being deceived. You know you are being deceived. But the deceiver and that one that is de deceiving, everybody will get the same judgment. No excuse for ignorance. There is no excuse. That is why you must be careful the church you are attending. Ask God. Take time out. Stay at home for a few days. Pray to God to direct you, to lead you. Because the church you are attending, you don't even know the foundation. The church I told you about, it was just because I just entered into the church for two and a half years. I was not myself. Hmm. I lost almost everything. Was, and it, was it different from the one where the man said, Hello, la palene. It is even different. I said, God has taken me through this experience hmm. because of this assignment that he has given me today. Sanitizing the church to depopulate hell and to populate heaven, which is what we are doing. I don't run a church. I'm not even a pastor. I don't even answer the name evangelist. I'm just Mr. I went to a church where they were I addressing me as a brother, Mr. Mr. Dami. And my son asked me one day, he said, why are they calling you, Mr. Are you, a, are you a, a, a teacher? I said, no, I said, I'm not even qualified to be a brother. But I know God has given an assignment. And the assignment is for everybody. There was a day I was going to, to, to a place and I entered a bus with a very beautiful lady. And we got somewhere and this lady shouted, praise the Lord. Mm. I was shocked. She was a, the last kind of person you expected to preach. Like when was, she was ditching out the word of God, I marveled. I was telling God, thank you. Hmm. And that is what God is doing these days now. People that you don't least expect, armed robbers, prostitutes, thieves, area boys, and God will just capture them and clean them up and send them out to win souls. Because the main generals that God has given this assignment, they are no longer doing it. So God needed a new set of people to do the bid of his kingdom. And that is why this thing has come out. And you are one of those troop members. Mm. Everybody that is ready to tell somebody, one person about Jesus. Gone are the days where you organize big crusades. I have no, I have no uh, uh, issue with crusades. But do you know that if you win one soul for God in one year, you are an achiever. Just one. But what God told me is that in this last day, two things are very important. Mm. Evangelism and charity. 
evangelism and charity. The church is doing evangelism, they are not doing charity. In a country where some people cannot afford to eat one day, there are churches that have tens of, 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 of private jets and they still want to buy more. They have big universities that they use the money of people to start and these, those people cannot go there. I paid for every member of my family when my own church wanted to start their university. But today, can I send my children there? It's not possible. We have gotten to a level where we do no longer idolize our, 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 our ministers. Mm. They are human beings like us. There's always a tendency for them to make errors. And misbehave. And misbehave. But it is now left for us as the members to say, Daddy, I don't think this thing is right. You can call him back to order. They are human beings. They can make errors sometimes. But do you think, sir, it is easy for you to tell a bishop or a or papa a boy or a uh we have WF Kumuyi or a Chris Okote or um or Chris Oya Hilume that sir why you did this wrong then please can we know how much we make in church today so that we can have an, a proper audit can i tell you a secret yes sir, sir. on daily basis i pray for pastor adeboye why is you do that sir because i see some things that are going wrong and i know baba is a human being mm. but because there are a lot of hofas that they are looking for what to eat they will not tell about the truth there was a particular statement, even when the issue of three kilometer by three kilometer auditorium came up, I was asking myself, of what benefit is this? It is no longer the number of people you have in your church, mm. but the number of people that are going, the souls that are going to heaven. Do you we, think, are not, we are not criticizing or castigating. Do you think legions of people that are going to that redeem Come every time. Do you think like ninety five can make heaven there, sir? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not God. Okay, sir. I don't have the right to condemn or to judge anybody. God has not given me the, that power to judge anybody. Mm. I believe it's a personal race. That race is not a race of your ministry. It's a personal race. Okay. You can be anywhere and serve God. Mm. But what we are saying is that when the system is wrong, when the ideology of a particular ministry is going from from righteousness to mundane things, then we must be very careful. And why we need to pray for some of these men of God is because there is a level you get to that you become very important. You no longer hear people. Or you no longer hear God, but you begin to hear people. More noise from the people than the very, very tiny voice of the Holy Spirit. The meek voice of the Holy the Spirit. The meek, tiny voice of the Holy Spirit. And one thing about the Holy Spirit is, it's a gradual process. If you are going wrong, he will continue to tell you, stop it, stop it. After some time, you will no longer hear from the Holy Spirit. It is the voice of people that you now be hearing. Because some of the things I hear from big men of God, I just wonder, what of what benefit that you have the biggest auditorium? When you were saying we have the biggest auditorium in Africa, what is the gain of heaven in that? Mm -hmm. When somebody was saying, we already have two or three universities, we are going to build about five more, what is the gain to heaven? All these are earthly things. They will all die in this world. They will all perish in this world. But the only thing that will survive and go beyond this life is the soul of a man. Hmm. Why are men of God not giving priority to the souls of men? Rather, they are building empires that will perish in this world. Hmm. It is not a sin for you to have a private jet. If you are going to use that private jet for good thing, for godly mission, evangelism and all that, all well and good. But when you find out the main purpose why you are doing all these things is to show up, or to prove that you are a God that serves the God of prosperity. God is a God of everything. If any man of God tells you the ministry that God has given me is to give children to people, he's a, he's a liar. If any man of God tells you that the ministry God has committed to my hands is to make people prosper, he's a liar. Anything outside the fact that you, you, are, you realign the soul of man back to God, that is the priority. Jesus Christ came for one purpose, and that is to reconcile man back to God. Mm. And you find that he was always talking about the kingdom of God is like this, the kingdom of God is like that, the kingdom. He never thought about, he said, in this world, you will prosper. But what does it profit you and even heaven if you can't gain the whole world and lose your soul? That is why it's so easy. A lot of churches that they are serving mammon, not God. Mammon. They are serving mammon. They are serving mammon, God that gives them wealth. God gives people wealth. But the devil also gives people wealth. Mammon gives people wealth. Marine power gives people wealth this day. But because of the greed of man. How about this greed? Serious greed of man. 
So when an utterance comes out of the mouth of a man of God, and those are things that you don't expect, we need to pray for them. It's not just their fault. Majority of them, the level they have gotten, there are a lot of people around there Let that me. push them to make errors. So as Christians, you must pray for your pastor. On easy lies the head that wears a crown. Do you know it is easier for you to make heaven as a church member? I think it's easier. Because you are responsible for your actions alone. Yes. But a, a, a pastor, a minister, a general overseer, you are not just responsible for your action, you are equally responsible for the action of so many people, everybody in your ministry. Because to whom much is given, much, much is expected. Is Wake up. Wake up. It is an emergency. This is the time for you and the remaining faithful soldiers to praise us and fight for my kingdom. There is so much crying and weeping here. My generals have disappointed me. Trusted and reliable officers have compromised. Left the place of assignment time with the enemy. They no longer contest for my kingdom. But instead, they have established their own rivals and empires where millions have been misled. I paid the ultimate price for this kingdom. I cannot afford it to fail. They call them generous, but they have assassins who endlessly fill my heart with sorrow. But the battle must go on. I need a new troop of ordinary fighters who are ready to defend my kingdom. It is the fall of the general and the rise of the truth. The fall of the general, Holy Spirit interpret this revelation. Beyond the death line, do not waste your time, give your life. Only God can set you free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beyond the death line, do not waste your time, give your life. Only God can set you free. Free, free, oh
Now, so all through the night, you know, you understand now. You got to clean, I tell you. <laughs> oh, Koto, Koto. <laughs> allergy. I mean, forget that allergy job. So a new guy now. We just learn the guy, you know. That, that the guy, oh my, I need money, you know. I need to take care of myself, no? Babe, forget that allergy job. Sending me to. Yeah, 250. Can you imagine? You, me, me, Jane. Waiting 250. What can 250 do? Is it my wrist? What is it? Oh, what is it? Me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's good, no? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the executive meeting of the Governor Generals. I really appreciate your coming. Thank you so much. I must commend. And uh, everything is in place to make your stay comfortable and wonderful. I trust you. <laughs> A five star hotel has been booked wow. for everybody to relax wow. at the end of every day's activities. The main reason for this meeting is for us to constantly update ourselves on how the church is taking over the world. God has strategically placed us mm -hmm. and blessed us financially mm -hmm. so that we can stamp our authorities at this end time. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, the head is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So we have no excuse not to establish ourselves. Let's go ahead and establish ourselves in every facet of society. In the education, in the health sectors, in the industry. Even in politics. In politics. Yes, yes. Our God is not a poor God. As a matter of fact, I tell my members, it is a sin to be poor. The God I serve, I, Bishop Badomeo, the God I serve is not a God of poverty. Mm -hmm. So it is a sin to be poor. Mm -hmm. So if you are poor, you are an enemy of God. That, that is what I'm pre preaching in my church. We need to teach our members financial technology, economic control. Including political control. Political uh -huh. control. That's true. Very, That's true. Very true. Very true. It's very important. Very. They need to know. It is what you teach them, they will do. I have a friend in UK. He single-handedly lent money to their government. So why can't we do the same? Uh -huh. We can do the same thing, yeah. We just need to start the process.
process now in every area of economy we should dominate. My Lord Bishop. Hmm. In fact, Mr. Chairman, to buttress on your point, I told my members that there's nothing wrong in them having a account for the pastor and the family mm -hmm. to join in or even enjoy overseas after I told why they fasting and praying. That is it. Oh, if for ministers, uh, governors, even even commissioners, even commissioners who are down the drink and even have their holiday overseas. Mm -hmm. What happens to we big generals like this who do fasting for them in the church? You know, Bishop Mike. Mm -hmm. You know, we belittle this our God. Mm -hmm. After all, this fasting is for them. I mean, I'm fasting two days white for them and all that. And then after this, we should be able to have holidays overseas in the Caribbean states. Do you know? Right. Some couple of weeks back, I had to do two days of, of white fast for my members. For your members. For my members. For, my members. for them. So after all these sessions, we have every right to fly to the best of hotels anywhere in the world. That, to that's rest. true. Go, that's true. Go to vacation in the Caribbean. That is it. Yes. And enjoy ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, it will be quite interesting to have a refreshment for pastors. After two days fasting and prayer for the church, yes. the pastor and his family need refreshment. That's true. And the provision should be made for them. As we can see, the time is very short. Some of them are still in the right. Some of them are still preaching the right message of salvation righteousness but we don't need that we don't need that all we need is their soul and we don't have time all we need is to make sure the mansion promised are not inhabited all we need is to make sure these people go down with us we need them to preach about things that are irrelevant. Things that we want to hear. And that is why we are here. The set time for the return of the Holy One is very near. There is nothing we can do about it. We cannot afford to let them go. Keep them more money. Keep them more women. Give them more resources. Give them fame. Let them lost for the things of the world. Remove righteousness and holiness from their lips. Our ministry has already a month prepared to build the largest event center in Africa. Wow! <laughs> 25,000 capacity. Oh my God. 25,000. Oh With cinemas, golf courses, mm -hmm. and other modern facilities. Mm -hmm. And it's going to contain 20 special hotels. Wow, I trust, I trust, I trust my bishop. It's <laughs> already the plan. Mm -hmm. More than 3.5 billion without borrowing wow. has been earmarked for that project. Wow. Mm. That's a good test. Bond is already a wow. <laughs> The bond is good. The judge is marching on. The judge is marching on. And the gate of hell shall not prevail. The judge is marching on. Brother, we bless God. Mm. The kingdom of devil is suffering a lot now, mm, yes. and our God is happy about that. Yes, yes. Well, in our own ministry, as you all know, giant strides have been taken to ensure that we are not lacking behind in the scheme of things. Uh, presently, you know, our ministry is the largest in the whole continent. So we shall soon catch up with you, Bishop. So soon, so soon. Yes. 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 So catch up so with you. Let me remind Bishop Mike mm. yes. that our headquarter branch is, is simply the most beautiful auditorium in the land. It is because Bishop has not seen the new edifice. That's true, Bishop Mike. Bishop uh, Blessed Man and I were in South Africa some couple of uh, months back. I saw the edifice that we have in South Africa. Very, very magnificent. You will be so proud. Very magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Concerning the royal crusade, I have contacted Pastor Kenny in the US to bring to the crusade three powerful, popular men of God and biggest men of God in the world to the crusade. Mm. And we have estimated to spend 500 million naira. Oh. The minister's conference alone will cost us 50 million naira. But with registrations, mm. we can make twice of that figure. Mm. With proper planning and adequate arrangements. At the end of that crusade, let me shock you. We are going to realize 2.5 billion naira. Wow, wow, wow. wow. That is That's good. Wow. That is great. Let's situation of the church today is worth it. The Father knows your concern. You're concerned about the situation of the church today. The church has deviated from what it was designed to be. Son, it is understandable. Son, I want you to know there are different categories of servants in God's buyout. Four types of ministers. Four categories. Lord have mercy. The first, and in actual fact, the only servant that is known by heaven are those that are called by God. They have a live encounter with the Savior and they have daily communion with Him. They are turned around in their lives. They have sweet fellowship with the Father. And they have daily communion with Him. They do His biddings, they obey His commands, and they do nothing without His control. They are the ones that are the true shepherds, that are truly taking care of the sheep. And this concern every day is how they will please the Master. That is the first. And the only recognized category of ministers. But son, there are still several other kinds of servants not known to heaven. The second of these many kinds of servants are those that once had an encounter with the Savior. They were in communion with the Holy Spirit. They did nothing without the control and the direction of the Spirit of the Father. But as time went by, son, success came in, fame came in, power 
came in, applause came in. And gradually, they started adding to the world. They started deviating from the commission. They started deviating from their rules of engagement. And with this came the path to destruction. These categories of servants that were once in fellowship with the Father deviated from the path and went their own ways. They went the ways of the society. Now they are servants of the society, servants of applause, servants of money, servants of flame, servants of fame, servants of power. They no longer serve the master and they are no longer known of the master. That is the second category of ministers. And there is this third category of ministers, not known by heaven, not known by the master, are those that were not at one time known by the father. They were not called by the father. They are not known to him. This set of people were called by themselves. They were called by friends, called by applause called by the society, called by the dictates of the things of the moment. They never knew the father and the father never knew them. But because the society applauded them into believing that they were ministers, these third categories of people were called by the desires of their congregation to spread all over and truly they are spreading, or spreading, not to heaven, but to eternal damnation, to eternal fire. That is the third category of ministers that exist today, son. The fourth, and as a matter of fact, the most dangerous of all these categories are those that were called, just as the father calls his own, the wicked one, called, prepared, and commissioned this fourth category of servants that we have, the ministers of the wicked one that have been called, prepared, and sent into the world for this end time assignment of deviating the loved ones, of distracting the sheep, and confusing the society, and leading them to eternal destruction. Those were the practical servants of Satan prepared, called, and commissioned by themselves. They know themselves, but they are not known of the Father. So, the heaven knows your concerns, son. He knows your feelings. He knows your prayers. He knows your concern. And he's backing you up. So keep fit. Stay fit. Stay firm. In the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. So go, son, into the world. Tell everyone about these things and the need for them to have a turnaround because the master is by the door. So go around just as we've been doing and tell the world, tell the islands, tell those that are called by themselves, tell everyone that the master is at the door. The time is right here. Go son, go, go, go. <laughs> Father, help me to accomplish this great task, even with other soldiers of yours that have refused to fall. Help us, Lord, help me to the glory and honor of your holy name. That hell must be depopulated and heaven populated. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. For by strength shall no man prevail. Your grace, O oh Lord, is sufficient for us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to the second day of this executive meeting. I really appreciate you. And um, there we have a very important discussion today. Very, very important. We all have projects. We all have what we want to achieve, but 
we need strategy to do that. So tonight, in the middle of the night while I was praying, Holy Spirit ministered to me that we should look into three things that are very, very important. The number one is the issue of tithes. Very, very important. It's like we've not been emphasizing on this enough in our various churches. You are very correct. The second one is the issue of loyalty. Mm. Our members should be very, very loyal to our this is when we talk about loyalty, mm. we have to be smart. That's true. People are getting ideas, terrible ideas on a daily basis. Tell me something. If you need to keep your church stabilized, mm. you must make your members loyal to mm. you. Mm. If they're not loyal to you, the church will collapse. Mm. That's true. Gone are the days when you allow anybody to say anything. Whatsoever I say in my ministry is fine. fine. And lastly, we need to delve into politics the politics of our nation and the one in the kingdom of God. You all know what is going on now. Yes. The election is the uh, our election is about to come up. Yes. And uh, I really want to hold a powerful position. And I want you all to support me. In the area of times, I have already told my members that you must bring 30% of your earnings, your income, that is what I need. I reject 10%. Mm. I don't want 10% anymore. Man of God, sir. Do you know why so many Christians are not being blessed today? It's because they don't tight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And when they don't tight, things become tight for them. That's true. Gone are the days when God declared. 10% as tight. Mm -hmm. When you look at the responsibilities of the early day church, there were not as much responsibilities as we have now. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So as things are changing, the level of tightening should yeah. change. Yeah. We need more money. That's true. It is no longer 10%, but 20, 25, 30. Yes. After there is no how this money will be enough. To carry on the projects that we have ahead of us. Right. They don't just have to give 10, 15, 20 percent, 30 percent. They have to give their eyes. Wow. That thing that is most precious to them. They must tear God up. They must yes, let you the tie to the church. If they can't bring it, they should sell it and bring it. And bring it. Bring the person mm -hmm. to the church. Hello. Oh, look at look at that. Just <laughs> Look at them. Look at the agenda. Let them build the massive churches. Let them look for members for right, left, and center. Let them feed them. But as long as they don't talk about the second coming, we are okay. <laughs> so, what do you think about their, their strategy? <laughs> I love the agenda. I'm going to capitalize on it. They still do work on them. <laughs> Mama, they need money to execute this whole project. What are you going to do? I feel for them. How foolish and self deceptive they are. <laughs> I feel for them and their followers because they will all perish with us. <laughs> we need them. This is why we are here. Only one sent us here. As long as they don't talk about the second coming of that good one, <laughs> show their mind to that. We are good. I have a candidate already. Uh -uh. <laughs> That's my candidate. You have a target already. Yes. <laughs> well, I told you we need to delve into politics. Very, very important. Oh, yes. The one in our nation and the one in the kingdom of God. Mm. I do want other bishops and men of God to outsmart us. We need to be smart. We need to occupy all the available top yes. positions. And hey, now that you have mentioned it, yes. I was going to suggest that before. We need an understanding leader. Not a leader that will quote every second night of the Bible. Mm -hmm. There must be reality in what we do. What we exactly, do. because we are living in today. I told today. my members what I have to do now. Moses did not do it. All. Mm -hmm. Moses did not pay the school fees. The school fees of his children. 
they did not have to buy a house in Banana mm -hmm. Island. They did not have to do all that. So we need they, they more. They didn't need a private. They didn't need it. So but things, things have changed now. And it must changed. reflect in the church. It must reflect. I'm behind the presidency in our own association. association. Mm -hmm. I know and I know all of you we you have it in mind to, to also occupy some position. Yes. I am ready to support you. That is it. Yes. We know that as soon as we have you as president of association, we know that other positions are covered by us. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any problem with that. We'll support you much more. You can be rest assured, my general. Mm -hmm. As the head of the finance department of the organization. I will raise so much money for the association that during your time mm. we have so much, much money, money to work with. Mm -hmm. To whatsoever might be the desire of your heart, you can bet on me. I trust you. So raise enough money. Uh, Brilliant. I'm very pleased with our meeting. <clears throat> we can now you can tell we have God's backing. Yes. It is really with us. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. my secretary to check um, my itinerary. However, uh, what did you say is the size of the church? No, no, that's too small. But you know, I, I don't grace such occasion. You know, the least members that should be ministering to should be up to 5,000. Yeah. Yeah. No, don't worry. You will check my, she will check my itinerary and then she will get back to you. Thank you very much. All right, bye bye. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, you called me. Yeah. I hope all is well. All is well. All is very, very well. Bishop Mike, you know you are very close to me and uh, <clears throat> there are some certain things I will be comfortable to discuss with you that I cannot discuss with other bishops. That's right. It's about our last uh, crusade. Oh. Very powerful crusade. Bless God for that. Mm -hmm. And now, just want to update you about how much we made. Oh, oh, okay. okay. That's very well. We made 500 million naira. 500 million naira? Yeah, that's very how powerful. Much, what was the total expenses on that crusade? Uh, one ninety yeah. years, I remember very well. Yeah, and that's not bad. So and um, so that's a profit of three hundred and ten million. Three ten million. million. That's good business. That's yeah. Good business. So, but mm, there's something there. There's a clause there. I'm 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 declaring this to you because you are very dear to me. And uh, between you and I, I'm just going to declare two hundred million million out of the five hundred out of the five hundred million. So. The 300 million is going to be between you and I. No problem. So, the 300 million, I'm giving you 100 million. Hmm, my bishop. Sure. Why not 150, 150? Bishop, my, <laughs> my wife has been on my neck. Her birthday is coming. She's demanding for 70 million. I have to give her that money. Okay. She's been on my neck. I hope you remember my wife's birthday just three days away from your wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bought her a very good car yesterday. Oh, awesome. And uh, yeah. She's fine. She's so happy. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, I'm going to give her that. Mm. That is why I'm giving you 100 million. And no then, I don't mind. The 30 million on top of I'll just transfer it to your wife account. Oh, that's good. Okay. Just uh -huh. I think that's you. better now. I'm sure she'll be happy. She'll be, she'll oh, definitely that'll be, be happy. Very, very good. Yeah. Thank you so that's much, Bishop. Mm. I hope the next crusade will make more money than that. We will definitely make more than that. We make more, more than, than that. About 2.5 billion. Yeah. We make more than that. <clears throat> there are plans on ground. We are still going to talk about that too. But, that reminds me, uh, we are going to, on our list, mm -hmm. the list of the bishop we did this crusade together. I noticed some. Why do I do? do. Uh, There's no problem so with that. We'll be very selective this time around. No problem. Mm -hmm. We are going to remove two people, but I'm going to tell you the yes. reason for that. No so, problem, no problem. Yeah. I trust you. You know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is fine with no you. Okay. All right, okay. let's just mm -hmm. keep rolling. Keep I rolling. appreciate you. It is well. Yes, sir. The financial report is ready. Yes, sir. He's here with me, sir. I'm more interested in that. Check that one for me first. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, we have all the help for you. We have a Take the tide for me. Check the tide for me first. Alright, sir. This is a we just give it. We have eleven million naira here. Eleven million what? Yes, sir. <laughs> that is too small. Ah, what's going on now? Last week it was fifteen million. Hey, this time around is eleven. How are we going to make money to complete all our projects? What is going on? Why are the people behaving like this? Or is it that you people are not working hard? I don't understand. Our best, um... Your best is not enough. That's what I'm talking about. You people are not working. No? I have to pay you, pay all the associate pastors. And money is not coming in. I deliberately trained you to be able to send mails. Use your skills. All this media marketing that I taught you, do all these things. Bombard them with mails. Let them know that it is important they need to pay their tithes. Eh? And these people are expecting God to, 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 to bless them. I doubt if you have been doing that. Eh? I will be complaining every day, every day. And 28th of the month, you people want to get your money back. What is going on? Why are you behaving like that? It's not too good. All my pastors are not trying to. I need urgent meeting with these people. When was the last time I changed my car? Over five months. Eh? I can't even afford to buy quality birthday gift for my wife. That's unfair. She's not happy. And this woman will come and I, I, I'm going to release prophetic blessings for you people. That's not too good. Check the offering for me. Ah. We need money. The cathedral is uncomplete. We, we, we need to finish that project. Yes, sir. What is that? We have 5.7. 5.7 again? Yes, sir. Uh, something is fishing. You people are joking. You, you yourself, you are joking with your jaw. Is your hand clean? Yes, sir. You sure your hand is clean? Yes. I will get to the root of this matter. Oh, Jesus. Check this man's tight for me, uh, Dickin Andrew. Mm. Check his tight for me. I want to see. I want to see who is on my side. Mm. This, this time around, I need to see who is with me. We have two fifty thousand. Yes, sir. Jesus. Two hundred and fifty thousand. Yes, sir. <laughs> you yourself, you are scared to say it. Look at that man. Two fifty thousand. Hey. This is the same man that paid two point five million naira for the release of his mom last month. See what is given to God. All right, uh, I know what to do. I'm not stupid. Anyone that will not pay thirty percent of his income to this church will not get miracle from this church. After all, I'm the one God is using for them. What is going on? God be judge you. You can go. I'm not just in good mood. Don't spoil my mood today, please. I'm sorry, sir. Ah, 